Corey Dickerson video, number one most critical hitting position. Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab. And in this Corey Dickerson video, we're gonna be looking at how efficient a hitter gets into their fight position can affect their OPS and OPS plus statistics positively or negatively. We're going to look at three human movement laws that Corey Dickerson uses to dominate his fight position. Number one, gravitational forces. Number two, transferring forward momentum. And number three, spine engine mechanics. But first, let's see how Corey Dickerson dominates his fight position with gravitational forces. Here's human movement laws that dominate number one, gravitational forces. Now what you're seeing here is Corey Dickerson hit his first major league home run at the beginning of the 2014 season. And what we're going to see is him get shorter from the time he picks his front foot up to the time that he lands in his fight position, which is right here. You're going to see him drop quite a bit. Now that's gravity and gravitational reaction forces or what he's using versus muscle. Let me show you from the chest view. So here what you're going to see is Corey Dickerson's going to float. He's going to have a minor pause before he starts to fall forward. Knees balanced over the toe. A lot of people don't like to see this knee over the toe, but this is just the float. This is a timing mechanism. And we're going to see him free fall. And as he's free falling, you're seeing him change levels. From his head being at the top, of, top line to the bottom line, he gets into his fight position and you're going to see him below this line. That's quite a bit. He's going to fall. He's using gravity. Gravity's pulling him down continuously. And then as he hits the ground, he's pushing into the ground and gravitational reaction forces are going to be pushing back. Now let's take a look at the human movement laws that dominate number two, transferring forward momentum. Another way that Corey Dickerson dominates getting to his fight position is by using forward momentum. A couple things here. Head movement. A lot of people don't like early head movement. But as you can see with Dickerson, his head's going to move from the top circle forward and down into the bottom circle as he gets into his fight position. This also gives a hitter a head start. Instead of Dickerson starting from a dead stop, he's going to get moving. He's going to float. This is a timing mechanism, knee over toe. Then that knee's going to slowly fall inside the back toe as he falls forward. This is going to make it easy to transfer energy from forward momentum into angular momentum or rotating momentum. It also increases bat speed evidenced in a Troy Tula Whiskey experiment video I did a couple months back. What does a fight position look like? Dickerson hits the ground. You're going to see him weighting his front leg, weighting it. You can see with the bend in the knee, knees located right over the ankle. Toe is open, about 45 degrees or more. If the toe's open, the knee's open, the hip's open. Thanks to Bob Hall from Canada, he suggested taking a point on the front of the thigh, pointing it at the pitcher as we fall forward. That's going to keep this whole segment open. And then the last part we're going to go into in the next video, which is human movement law number two that Corey Dickerson's dominating, spine engine mechanics. How well a hitter can transfer power in the swing all depends on this front shoulder and loading the springy fascia material within our body. And to do that, we have to have a down shoulder angle. And as you can see with Dickerson here, he doesn't really have much of one. So my suggestion, suggestion to him is to get this back elbow up a little bit higher maybe in line with the top hand or maybe a little higher than the top hand that would give him that front shoulder moving down and in towards the back hip. Now Corey Dickerson does the basics here but I could see him doing a little bit better at showing his number and hiding his hands. Getting to that fight position it's crucial that even if he had a double digit number on his back that we could see that full double digit number and also not really seeing his hands so much. We do, we do lose him a little bit but I'd like to see those hands tuck a little bit. And I think if he gets that back elbow up a little bit more, I think that's going to help to hide those hands. Hope you learned a lot from this video. Click the link below in the About section if you're watching this on YouTube to go and read the full article link. Otherwise, make sure we're swinging smarter by moving better.